Dr. Doreen Bolger uh, has honored us uh, by uh, being willing to be the juror for this important show, Hashtag Woman. Um, Doreen retired in 2015 after 17 years as the director of the Baltimore Museum of Fine Arts. So many of you probably do know her and uh, her great work at the museum because while she was the director, uh, she expanded educational programs, uh, initiated a very dynamic uh, temporary exhibition program, and really redefined the artistic mission of the Baltimore Museum, as well as eliminating general admission fees, uh, something that uh, with what's going on in our country today, I think uh, looms even larger as an important and groundbreaking decision uh, because as you know, museums always seem to be struggling with their finances. But in Baltimore, we had a city where we had a very diverse community and we really needed to have an initiative like that uh, increase the accessibility of that wonderful institution to the people of Baltimore and this region. Um, before her tenure at the Baltimore Museum, Doreen was the director of the Rhode Island School of Design Museum. Uh, and I think if any of you ever visited there, you know what a wonderful collection it has and what a great museum it is. And if you've not been there, add it to your to-do list um, because it really is uh, a great place and a surprisingly uh, comprehensive and strong collection uh, that you'd uh, enjoy seeing. Uh, before that, uh, Doreen was also the curator of American art at the Metropolitan Museum. I don't need to say more about them, particularly having spent 30 years at the National Gallery. Uh, it was ingrained in me that they were great colleagues, but we didn't talk about them unless we had to. <laughs> 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 uh, like and, <laughs> <laughs> and, and before that, she was also a uh, curator at the Eamon Carter Museum in Fort Worth, another wonderful museum, particularly of American art. Uh, and uh, you'll want to visit that if you haven't done it after all of these travel restrictions are over. And finally, I'll just say that uh, especially since her retirement, Doreen has been a very vigorous supporter of Maryland artists, uh, and she serves on the board of the Creative Alliance, uh, Maryland Citizen for the Arts, and the Charles Street Development Corporation. So she is a very important member of our regional and national arts community, and it is truly an honor to the uh, Maryland Federation of Art to have her agree to be the juror for the show. And now uh, Doreen will talk a little bit about uh, the uh, show and what she was looking for in the jurors process. And then she will uh, um, give the awards virtually uh, to the people that she decided deserved a, a jurors uh, choice and honorable mention prizes. So thank you again, Doreen, and the floor is yours. Well, thank you. Um, I, where to begin? Um, I guess I'll begin by saying that 2020 is the 100th anniversary of women receiving the right to vote um, uh, in the United States. Um, so that, that's the reason why it's been declared the year of the woman. Um, and that's what prompted um, the Maryland Federation to, to hold this wonderful exhibit. Um, but I would, I would also add that um, if I had my choice, um, I'd skip the idea of the year of the woman and just dedicate the next century to evening things out for women, because it probably will take that long uh, before all women um, uh, achieve uh, the recognition for the great potential they have. Um, so, um, in, in any event, artists from across the nation submitted uh, work for this exhibition, men as well as women. And um, they were asked to reflect uh, on a basic question. What does it mean to be a woman in the 21st century? And um, the implication, of course, is um, a second question. How have things changed or not for American women over the past 100 years? So the artists featured in the show have portrayed women um, 
in their domestic setting, out in society, alone and socially in interaction with others um, that sort of might be interpreted as statements about the place of women in society today in our own time. Um, for me, as I was viewing these um, examples in the wake of the current public health crisis, um, I found that the artists and their, their subjects were generally very uplifting and positive. Um, the women who, uh, who, who uh, were shown with others present or implied um, are shown as really caring, as supportive, confident, and self-assertive. And um, as viewers, we're asked to recall the female family and friends we have and think about the difference they've made in the world. So um, we need to remember that even today um, in 2020, there are obstacles for women and particularly uh, for women of color. So um, we, we, haven't, we haven't gotten quite to where we need to be, but we've made progress, which is good. So um, I guess now we could go around and look at the jurors' choices and you can start with whichever one you'd like. <laughs> I, I, I should begin by saying that the work that was submitted for this show was so extraordinary that for me, it was very hard to limit it down to the few choices I was told to make and I did the best I could, but I want every artist who submitted to know that you know every single piece was amazing and it was really difficult to make these choices. Uh, so what, what I might do is just go through and, and, and say a couple of words um, about each of the um, the artists who've won awards, yes, um, and encourage you to, to to look at those wonderful images. I apologize in advance for mis for any mispronunciations of anyone's <laughs> name. Um, I'll do the best I can. So uh, I'll begin with Rosa Innes Vera, whose work Sea Change is mixed media, uh, which is my first uh, juror's choice. Um, and um, that piece is incredible. It shows at its center a silhouetted woman um, standing again. It's just sort of a brown uh, shadow and with a little bit of color uh, for clothing. And behind her is just a fantastic, um, slightly abstracted view um, of her setting, uh, an interior on one side and it, it looks to me like a, a distant person uh, off to her left. Um, so that was acrylic and collage on wood panel. The next piece by Donna Massey is called Dark Beauty. And um, it's quite amazing. It's mixed media on an acrylic slab. And uh, what's wonderful about this is that you can see um, a couple of women uh, who've been uh, depicted on this clear support. Um, I think there are children perhaps uh, as well in, in the view, um, but it's, it's quite remarkable. And again, uh, you know, you, you would have to put this against a, a sort of um, neutral background to fully appreciate it and have some light behind it. It's an extraordinary piece. Um, next, juror's choice is uh, Winston Eden. Uh, it's called Upper Level, and it was made with oil pigment sticks and acrylic on canvas. And um, what uh, Winston is showing us is um, an amazing, uh, so the upper level is the upper level of the uh, female figure that's in the, in the depiction. And also, clearly, the figure is standing on an upper level because you can see a distant view um, of the urban landscape um, behind her. And so you sort of feel like you're looking up to her. It's, it's really fantastic. Um, the next juror's choice is by Iowa Jane Pereira. It's called Moonlight Paddle and it's mixed media. And it shows, it uses recycled paper to create a image um, of um, a relief that sh shows a woman paddling um, along um, in, in what I guess might be a kayak. I'm, I'm not good at those things, but um, it's an amazingly uh, beautiful piece, um, making tremendous use of, of things that uh, 
could have been tossed away, but instead were used to create something fantastic. Um, the final juror's choice is uh, Maureen Farrell, and it's called Alike But Different, and it's made from mixed media. And it shows um, a sort of slightly simplified and abstracted view of three uh, figures, uh, female figures, uh, standing tall and proud. And um, it's somewhat, um, it, it's quite beautiful. Um, so those were the jurors' choices. And um, I, I have to say they were, each piece was incredible. Next, we'll get into the honorable mentions. We have uh, Jay Petersell in the city, um, which is oil and charcoal on canvas showing two figures dancing with each other. And um, the animation of it was very appealing to me. The sort of sense of movement that was conveyed by the artist was quite appealing. Um, the next honorable mention is Annette Marie Yorowski and it's called Madonna of the Rocks. And that's a watercolor and collage on Yupo paper. And it's just quite amazing. I, you know, a, a, in the center, it, it, there's a circle where the figure is depicted um, sort of realistically. Um, and then the surrounding areas are, um, are, are more abstracted, but you can make out certain details um, as if, um, on the rocks, there are, there's another figure or two painted. Um, the next honorable mention is Anita Ewing. It's called Bales Media and it's acrylic. And um, it shows, uh, it, it's almost abstracted um, in a sense. You, you know that they're figures, um, but you see the re repetition of shapes um, of the figures in their veils, sort of two lines of them, and wonderful um, uh, sort of yellow uh, uh, lines going through that look like light shining on them. And um, while you can't make out the images of any of their faces, you can see um, you can see uh, you can get the sense of of their strength, of their solidarity together, and of their expression. Um, next honorable mention is uh, Betty Pethel, Grandmother's Love, Oil on Canvas. And uh, this is quite a charming representational piece that shows um, a grandmother uh, seated in a chair um, and leaning against her is a child. And, uh, I just felt that this so beautifully captured um, the the sort of love that that so many grandmothers have uh, for that gen you know the, the generation beyond their children reaching into their grandchildren and behind this woman there's a be and child there's a beautiful window with light shining in and you just sort of feel as though um, the grandmother and the child are each illuminating and lighting up each other's lives. The final piece in honorable mention is by Richard Wieblinger. It's called Woman Dresses 4031 and it's an archival digital photograph. And it shows three different, uh, four different um, red dresses uh, sort of hanging from hooks um, against a, a window uh, or a brick wall it, it is beyond the window. And um, it's just sort of, you know, captures the sense of fashion that we all aspire to have. Mm -hmm. um, I wish I could achieve that, but I, you know, I'm, at 71, I'm beyond wearing dresses like that, but it, it's, <laughs> they're, they're quite beautiful. And um, um, it made me think of my own daughter and and uh, the dresses that she likes to wear. <laughs> so that is, you know, a summary of, of what we have picked for the, the jurors' choices and the honorable mentions. Well, Doreen, once again, thank you for uh, participating and doing this. I know how arduous it can be to uh, be a juror, and uh, I know how busy you still are, even in retirement. And I especially appreciate 
you rolling with the punches today when we <laughs> at the MFA still have some glitches to work out. Um, and the other thing I want to uh, let everybody know is that, you know, this is an arduous task to be the juror. And typically the MFA does uh, present an honorarium to jurors. But Doreen was generous enough and kind enough to uh, pass that honorarium on to the awardees. So unlike most of our shows, every awardee has received at least some honorary, uh, excuse me, some monetary uh, award for their selection. And I can say uh, that I wholeheartedly endorse uh, Doreen's choices because this really was a, a very fine exhibit and um, a very fine choice that she made. So uh, that is pretty much the way that we would have done it in the galleries face to face, because of course in the galleries, it's even harder to see all of the <laughs> awarded works. Uh, and I apologize for the glitch. Uh, we should have been better prepared with that because that might be one of the benefits of having to do it virtually. We could have shown them uh, to you clearly. So again, uh, thank you all for participating and to, uh, for attending. And we'll try to do this more efficiently uh, the next time before we return to live receptions. So again, Abigail, thank you uh, for your help. And Doreen, thank you for your hard work as the juror. And thank you all for attending. And that wraps up today's program.